Bible study prayer meeting. Amen? Amen. We thank the Lord for the opportunity to study. Uh, if we didn't have Bible study prayer meeting, this study life would be diminished because we need that of time to come together and provoke one another through love and good works. Amen? Amen. And so it's a marvelous ministry. <coughs> Even though it's a few here, uh, it still keeps you on ready, on ready alert. Amen? That what the military have, you got to be able to stand on ready. Is that right? Ready to be able to give account of what God has done. So we thank God for that, and we're glad you're here tonight. It's always exciting and thrilling when we are together as a family in prayer. Amen? We're going to be in prayer for Reverend Biggs tonight. I did get a call that he was in surgery or text uh, from St. Stephen's. Uh, so I didn't get the long and short of it. I just got that he was undergoing surgery at Bamsey. And we want to lift up Reverend Big St. Stephen's pastor. And uh, that's all I know at the moment. We do all the praying for Sister Beverly Sims, who's back home. Uh, and we thank God for that. She had been in surgery, too. Uh, so we want to lift these people up in prayer. Amen? Amen. That's why we have midweek service, so we can pray for those who need prayer. Amen. Are we on, Brother Barty? Yeah. Hold up my green thing so I can go. I'm on. Bible study. We're glad you joined us. If you joined by way of internet, we thank God for you. We're in the beautiful sanctuary of Bethany First Baptist Church, and we thank God for the saints who gathered here tonight at 202 Nobleman Drive. We are grateful to God because studying the Word is the most powerful thing we can do as we begin to know God in the excellency of His Word. Tonight, we're going to look at the power that's in praise and worship. There's power in praise and worship. And God wants you to know that. There's the most important thing about us is that we worship God. We're not here just because of our talents or our beauty or anything like that. God has called us to use, be used, and we are to be available to him. So the most important thing we can do is be available and be still and know that he's God. Amen? Amen. And so we're going to look at that tonight because... Uh, I believe, I believe in my heart of hearts, God is moving in this time period. Amen. Uh, I can sense it. There's a movement going on, and it's in my spirit. Amen? And the Lord just told me, just be still. Be still. Be still. Amen? And know that I'm God. I don't know what movement it is. And so uh, I, I was asking the Lord on the way over here, what should I know? And the Lord said, nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. I said, all right, that's, I can handle nothing. Now. I can handle nothing. I ain't got me know nothing. And I can get me nothing get along well. And so the Lord just says, nothing. I need you to do nothing. So we're going to look tonight at a very unique form of worship and, and praise that brought power uh, to the leader and power to the individual. Because it's important to know, as even a leader or as a person who God will use, that you have to bring yourself to humility and worship before you can do anything. If you're a great painter or anything like that, uh, you have to understand that that talent is of God, and you have to kind of be prompted by the Spirit as to what you do. Amen? Amen. Uh, whatever it is, it has to be submitted to God. Amen? Amen. I practice law, but I have to submit to God. I don't know everything, and people like to think, well, you're a nugget, you can do anything. No, I can't. No, I can't. I can only do what the Lord allows me to do, because there are a whole lot of things I can't do in good conscience. Amen? Amen. 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 Get out of here. I ain't going to put nothing crazy. Amen? Amen. Folks have all kinds of angles on things. Yeah, yeah. So you have to draw a line and tell them where you stand. Yeah. And I never do divorces. Amen? Don't you do that? No, I never. I promised God when I first got it, I never do divorces. But God has joined together. Yeah, yeah. Let not man put asunder. Now, if He didn't join together, that's your problem. You should have listened to your mama. Amen. Yeah. Amen. All right. Well, here we go. Here we go. Because we're going to look tonight at the book of Joshua. Amen. We know Joshua was famous for something. At least they made a song about it. He fought the battle of what? Yeah. That's the only battle he fought, but that is the most memorable one that's memorialized, that Joshua fought the battle of Jericho. But did you know before the battle?
found with Jericho, he had a close encounter of the divine guy. Amen. A close encounter of the divine guy. And that is where worship and praise came in. If he didn't know what to do in that close encounter, he would have missed the mark and the people would have been defeated. So we're going to look tonight in the book, the fifth chapter of the book of Joshua. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho and the walls did what? Yeah. Fell down flat. Thank God for Bible readers. I hope you weren't going to say the old thing, the walls came from the No, they didn't come down, tumble down. We're going to find out tonight. Flat, flat, flat. It's what the Bible says. Amen? Amen? So the song was off. If you're listening for the song for your theology, you just made an error. Amen? Because the walls fell down. F-L-A-T, flat. Amen? Are you ready? Ready for some Bible? I love Bible. Amen? I love Bible study. I love the Word. Amen? You ought to love the Word, too. I want to be an excitement in the air. Amen? We're going to have that stadium over here. Uh, it's already up. The lights will be on. Can you imagine the first event that will be there? The whole neighborhood's going to hear the loud speaker. Amen? I've already claimed that we're going to go down to that amphitheater. And the first thing we ought to have in that amphitheater is an Easter pageant. Amen? An Easter play. Amen? We ought to use that and dedicate it to the Lord. We're the closest church to it in the whole city. Amen. We ought to be claiming something, staking out, you know, going around. It's ours. Our tax dollars paid for it. Yeah. So Octavius and the centurions, yeah. amen, are going to go down and get to us the temptations move if you can get it. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. You got it. We're going to go down and claim that. Whenever it's open, we're going to put on the first thing, play auto, at the amphitheater ought to be a crazy place about a, a play about Christ. Right. Is that right? Yeah. Am I talking some sense? Amen. I'll not be something crazy with wine bottles everywhere. A bunch of dope smokers, huh? Yeah. It ought to be for Christ. Yeah. We ought to claim it. We ought to set the standard. Yeah. All right, I'm through that. That was my sermon, that editorial. Father, we thank you because your word is rich, powerful, and true. Yeah. Open now our hearts because we seek you, Lord. And there's so many empty spaces in our heart. And there's so many areas, Lord, where we are undecided. And there's so many places we're still seeking and searching. But your word says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. And knock and the door shall be opened. Yes. Open our hearts, open our understanding. Enlighten us, O oh God. And give us thy word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Here we have, as we pick up the fifth chapter here, we're going to be finding that in the fifth chapter, the people, the children of Israel, camped around the ninth verse, camped at Gilgal. Gilgal was going to be their central headquarters as they got ready to take the promised land. And of course, they camped at Gilgal, and as they camped at Gilgal, they were ready, going to be ready to take away the reproach from Egypt. That means they did a circumcision. So let's pick up our story here. Because we're going to get to this Jordan. The Jordan opens up, and they cross over and go into Gilgal, set up their headquarters, and now it's time to look at Jericho. Jericho was the main fortress, a fortified city with walls 30 feet high, which means as high as the billboard on the expressway. And the children of Israel said, the walls go to the sky. That was what, 30 feet high? They said, the walls touch the sky. How are we going to deal with that? So here is Joshua now, perplexed. A leader is perplexed. A leader is trying to find out what my next move should be. And who does he consult? Well, he consults God. But in the meantime, he's worried before God comes. He doesn't know what to do. So we're picking up the action with a leader seeking and searching for an answer. So it says in Gilgad, verse 9, And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day, this day, have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you. Wherefore, the name of this place is called Gilgal unto this day. All right? Because it means taking away the reproach. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal and kept, what did they keep? The Passover. The Passover, of course, was a sacred time when the death angel passed over Egypt. Is that right? And so the Lord says, this will be sacred. You're going to have to eat this Passover and observe this Passover. So they didn't neglect. Our first stop in, in worship is to not neglect to do the things God has called us to do. Amen? Our first act in worship is to remember what thus saith the Lord. And the Lord says the Sabbath is holy. Is that right? And he says upon the first day of week, let that be no, in other words, gather together, let that be no uh, uh, 
dissension, let that be no, not gathering, but uh, gather upon the law upon the first day of the week, and then that's holy. Amen? So when the Sabbath comes, we're looking at gathering together. And here was the children of Israel remembering that the, the Passover was sacred. Amen? All right? And the children of Israel in camp in Gilgal kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at evening in the plains of where? They're in Jericho. The city is a distance away, and it's a fortified city, and they're out there doing what God said to do. Is that good? Good. Amen? Amen. Yeah. All right, let's move forward. And they did of eat of the old grain of the land, and on the next day after the Passover, unleavened cakes and parched corn, and, and the very same day. And the manna ceased on the next day after they had eaten the old grain of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna anymore, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan uh, that year. All right. That's important because they're now, the God has said, I'm getting you into the promised land. Now, the only thing, I'm going to give you your inheritance, but the only thing stands in the way of your inheritance is the enemy. The enemy stands in the way of your inheritance. So your inheritance is the promised land. I'm giving you the land, but before you can get the land, you've got to conquer your enemy. Is that the way the Lord does? The biggest enemy we have is ourselves. <coughs> Hide me from what? My enemies? Even if the enemy is me. That's what the song says. So Jer Jer Joshua was dealing with the fact that he had to deal with getting the inheritance, but the inheritance had a problem. You've got to dislodge the enemy before you can have it. So now he's dealing with this thing about um, looking at the, uh, the walls of Jericho. Verse 13 says, verse 13 says, And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went out and unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or against us? Now this is the scene. Let me see if I got my sword here. Amen. Should have my sword right hand. What would you think? You're walking on a stroll in the evening and somebody's there. Huh? Huh? Looking at you? The sword is drawn. You turn around. Excuse me, huh? Now we get that tipping motion again. I'm out of here. So here, here is a sword drawn, and Joshua doesn't know who it belongs to. In other words, who the man is. Are you for us or are you against us? Now, let's lay the predicate properly. Because the Lord has a way of appearing at the most, uh, I guess, uh, critical moments in your life. In, in Abram's life, the Lord God, Jesus, came down as the pre-incarnate Christ and was in the place like Melchizedek. He came as a traveler. And Abram, how I thought we showed you the film on that, amen? And he brought him bread and wine. And they converse. So for Abraham, uh, the Lord Jesus pre-incarnate came as a man and said, I'm, I'm going to greet you as a traveler. And for Abraham, I will have food and take a meal with him. All right? So then we have that. Then we have with Jacob, the Lord appears as a, as a wrestler. Is that right? Yeah. Jacob was left alone that night. And all of a sudden, man didn't say good evening. Didn't say how. Oh, he just grabbed him around him and started wrestling with him. Because he was bringing him into submission that he might be used of God. Is that right? And then old Jacob finally held him and said, Now I won't let you go till you do what? Yeah. Till you bless me. I don't want to the back. Now, now bless me. And he said, What is thy name? He said, Jacob, supplanter. He said, You will no longer be supplanter. When you are a prince and you have prevailed with God, your name will be Israel. Touch the hollow of his thigh, and every time he walked, he walked with a limp to remember the transition. Now he would come to Joshua. In the, fight, in the way that Joshua needed. Captain of the armies of the Lord. I'm neither for you or against you. Watch the language. Because it says, are you for us or against us? And the angel will say, nay. In other words, nay of both of them. I've come not to take sides, but to take over. All right, here we go. Here we go. So Joshua said, and, all right, and he said, but as captain of the host, am I now come. And Joshua did what? fell on his face to the earth. He got down quickly. 
he got down quickly because he knew this visitor was not an ordinary man. Something about him, like the men on the road to Emmaus, remember? They were walking and Jesus was walking with them. What is this conversation you're having? And Jesus had, if you will, restrained their eyes from seeing. But when they ate the food, their eyes were open. Is that right? I'm talking about the disciples in Emmaus. And they saw Jesus and then he just disappeared. Thing that Joshua had that kind of background because God had appeared to Moses and Joshua was aware that God can appear. So when he saw in those days a stranger, he was careful how to treat him. Amen? We're not like we treat people. Oh Lord, we would have never made it. But, but Joshua said, this is the angel of the Lord and fell on his face. Is that right? That's what the Bible said to the earth. Is that what it said? Fell on his face to the earth. He got down. This is God. Something about that stranger was, was, was mysterious and marvelous, and he taught, signaled Joshua's brain, this is God. This is God. Uh-oh. This is God. Have you ever had any of those moments? God did this. Uh-oh. Huh? Uh-oh. I better want to proceed with caution. You better slow down and proceed with caution. So Joshua fell on his face and did what? He worshiped. He worshiped and said, now, that's the thing. God wants you to come into, it wasn't the talents that Joshua brought. Remember, Joshua was a young man who was a warrior, and he fought most of the battle, all of the battles for Israel. But he didn't come and say, well, you know, I'm, I'm Joshua. Uh, you can tell me what's going on, Peter. You know how we get it. He fell down and worshiped. So it's not our talents. It's our humility and Christ-likeness God wants to use first. So you now, we'll be thinking, some people say, well, I got a Ph.D., and I, I, I'm going to let the Lord use this and come over and show these dumb church folks something. That's how people get cavalier, arrogant, all of those things. God says, I'm not gonna, your little knowledge is nothing to me, peanut butter and jelly. All I want to do is take you from where you are to where you ought to be. And the only way I'm going to do that is you get humble. I will lift up the humble, but those who are proud, I will abase them. So do you understand that? It's not what you bring to the Lord, it's what it, except that you bring your availability. If you bring your availability and be humble, God can really, a humble person in the hand of God can be a powerful, dangerous person to the world because God can use that person in a powerful way. So Joshua fell on his face and worshiped, and once he recognized what his standing was before God, he was a servant. What did he say? What was his question? What saith my Lord unto his what? Servant. He put himself where he belonged, in the place of a servant. And you remember, the Lord commands. The Lord has a right to command. And so the Lord is coming as a commander-in-chief of the host of the armies of God. That's pretty big, isn't it? Yeah. Now, Joshua and his little people had been in the wilderness for 40 years. Is that right? Most of the old ones who were over 20 died off. So we're looking at folk now who never knew how to fight a battle. Coming out of the wilderness unskilled, coming out of the wilderness without any battle accoutrements or armor. All they had was slingshots, javelins, and, and, and uh, bows and arrows. And how do you attack a 30 feet high wall with just spears, javelins, arrows, and swords? You couldn't. So Joshua was out there strolling, probably wondering, Lord, how are we going to take this battle? How are we going to deal with it? He was just out there at the midnight hour, walking around, determining how are we going to take God and send them into battle? We have no battering rams. We have no towers to push up to the wall. We have no catapults that shoot over the wall. We don't have nothing. And that's exactly when God knew what was on his mind, and God would meet him in the way. There's something about stepping out on faith when God will meet you in the way. Amen? Amen. So now he bows down unto the Lord and asks the right question. Did I say, yeah, did I preach about one question that can make all the difference? Yeah. And that was truly, here is a question. Lord, what would you have your servant do? Amen? Amen. Kind of same like the question of Paul on the road to Damascus. Yeah. Lord, what would you have me to do? All of those questions are important when, because they show submission. All right? Do you follow that? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, now, they didn't get down to business until we got to the business of worship. What did he say? Loose thy shoe from off thy foot for the place whereon thou standest. Holy! is holy. Is that right? You can't do nothing until you worship. You can't do nothing about anything until you worship. So be still and be quiet and be submissive. Because 
I'm going to move in my own time. I've come to take over. But then how did you know this is Jesus? Because no angel receives that kind of worship. Is that right? right. No angel says, take off your shoes and cry out. Only God said that to who? Moses, when he was on the mount. And now God would appear to Joshua and begin to magnify Joshua in the eyes of the people in this battle. And so he tells him, take off your shoes. Can you imagine seeing a warrior? And this warrior is God. It has a face of a man. But it's God, it's Christ Jesus on the inside. Yeah. Woo, that's something, isn't it? Yeah. Lord is talking to you. He did that with Melchizedek. He did it with the wrestler with Jacob. And now he's coming as a warrior. And remember, God is, Jesus is a warrior. What did he tell, uh, what did he tell Pontius Pilate? Think not, I, I cannot call 12 legions uh, of who? I'm, he said, I'm, I'm the commander in chief of the armies of heaven. You don't think I can win you? I can call 12, 12 legions. And then 12, one angel would have turned them out. Huh? Yeah. You got 12 legions, and Pontius Pilate and all the Roman government would have been upset. So Jesus is commander and chief of the armies of heaven. And when he comes back, he's coming back with an army, isn't he? Yeah. I don't care what that little skinny man says in Iran about trying to beat up on Israel. He says, we got missiles, we can, we can take on America. I'm talking about the uh, uh, prime minister of Iran. It's making all this noise, making our gas prices go up, uh, blocking the, the sea lanes out there. Yeah. When that man's talking about he's going to jump on us and jump on he better should have, because he don't know what God is going to do for Israel. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You think because you got some nuclear bombs, those babies can blow up in the silos that hold them. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? So here's God saying, here's the Lord telling uh, Joshua, take off your shoes. The first thing you're going to do is worship. Is that right? For the place where I'm not standing is holy. Now, we have a, a chapter break, but I don't believe that's a break in the action. We go now from verse 15 to chapter 6. The Bible wasn't put into chapters until long after it was written. So there are some breaks that don't make sense. The story continues. All right? The story continues. Now, Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. They knew Israel had camped in Gilgal, crossed the flooded Jordan, and the Lord had done a miracle for them by opening that Jordan River, and they crossed over on dry ground. The people of Jericho heard of that. Now, if you were sitting in Jericho and heard, oh, they're not going to get over because two things. We got the Jordan River, and we got these high walls, baby. Boom! The river is all of a sudden no problem at flood stage. At flood stage, it's, it's flooded. I know they ain't getting over there. God's popular. there. He showed up just one side, dried the land. A million or more people marched over. Boom! They're down in Seguin, ready to come in here. Huh? Does that sound like they're close? Well, what are you going to trust in, man? We got the walls, huh? All right, here we go. Now, Joshua, so Jericho was shut up securely. None came out of the window. And the Lord, here comes the plan, here comes the plan after the worship. The worship brought the plan. When you're at your lowest state and you need to be in church, when you're at your lowest state and don't know what to do, you need to seek God. The devil always keeps people home to lament and say how bad and pitiful they are. Oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. You're going to stay in the press state when you do that. You need to get out, wash your face, and go worship. Amen? Amen. Amen. The more you stay at home, you're going to get deeper in a depression. You look at yourself, you look at the TV, and you look at the dog, the dog looking at you funny. Huh? All of these things, and God says, get up and go worship. <coughs> Joshua got up and worshiped, and then his spirit was lifted. Now he comes the plan. God has the plan. He got the plan after he worshiped. Do you see that? Your feelings can be uplifted. Your, your gloom can be turned to joy. Your sorrow can be turned to happiness when you worship. Yeah. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Is that what Nehemiah said? Is our strength. Yeah. Amen? It's our strength. Y'all don't act like it's your strength. Y'all say strength. Y'all need some general talk. Yeah, yeah I say strength. Amen? The joy of the Lord is our what? Strength. Amen. And that's our strength. And in his name, in his word. So now John would bring the plan to Joshua, all right? And the Lord said unto Joshua, after he worshiped, after he'd taken off his shoes, I have, look at this, in the past tense. He speaks in the past tense because God is in the future and backs the future into the present. So God comes out of the future talking about, I've already given unto Joshua, I've already given thy hand uh, Jericho, into thy hand Jericho, and its king and the mighty men of battle. You ain't got to do nothing because I've already fixed it. Yeah, I'm ready to 
look at the worry that that takes off. You are healed. I've already healed. Go on in there in the morning and get your clean bill of health. Is that what God is saying? I've already backed your blessing in from, the, from eternity in the time, and it's already fixed. So God is speaking in the past tense about what's happening in the future because God works from the future back. We're the only ones that live from the past going forward. God has already slapped that blessing into the present tense, and he's speaking in the past tense. Then God something else should I El Elohim, amen? Don't you feel God moving now? And so he says, I've already given into thy hand Jericho its king, and it's mighty men. In other words, you're going to get a present in the morning. And he said, and ye shall do what? Compass the city. All ye men of war, go round about the city once. Thou shalt do this six days. God is setting forth the plan. I want you to go around the city once for six days. And in those six days, I don't want you to say a word. Most of Baptist folk would not have made this plan. Because they can't, they can't keep their mouth closed for six days. I'm sure preaching here. They got to say, you going? I'm not going. Well, you got some sandals? I don't have no sandals. We'd be over planning, over extending. God said, get up and go around and keep your mouth closed for six days. Boy, that would be tough. I know y'all looking at me. I can't even know you could. And on the fifth day, you'd speak. Amen. <laughs> so for six days, you had to be quiet. Be quiet. Be still. Do nothing. And ye shall come to the city. And the seventh priest shall bear before you the ark. Watch these sevens. How many priests? Yeah. Then have how many trumpets? Seven. And a grand sword. And on the seventh one, yeah. you shall compass the city. How many times? Seven. God is seven is God's number of perfection. And when God is telling you, you better listen and you better follow and you better keep count. Naaman went over there. Remember the captain of the Syrian army went over to see Elijah and he dipped himself. How many times? He dipped himself in the dirty Jordan. How many times? Seven. On the sixth time he was cursing man, talking about ain't nothing happened. And the servant said, but you haven't done seven yet, master. Huh? And then when he went to the seventh Greek, God Almighty got him. God, it's not in the, it's not that seven is the lucky number. Seven is God's number yeah. of perfection. And God put his perfection in seven. He could have chosen eight. So there's no sense in everybody getting on a junket going to Las Vegas talking about, come on, don't be sure. Let me say, I ain't got nothing to do with you. First of all, you are not in God's will gambling anyway. Right. Right. Y'all hear that out there in the internet, man? You don't know, y'all stay off that gambling. God is trying to chase her. And the will of God was put in the number, not the number given to man for some love. Boy, right. oh, we got some crazy stuff I got to preach out of y'all. Yeah. Amen. I don't mean out of y'all, but I mean out of the world. Everybody got seven and eleven. Come on, so give me a new pair of shoes. That's what they say. Look, if you're waiting for that number for a new pair of shoes, you need to go get some, 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 some kind of special foot care. Amen. Now, let me move on. But there were seven priests with seven trumpets. On the seventh day, they would go seven times. That's four times seven. That's 28. Amen. All right. Now, when it came to pass, now, when you, and it shall come to pass, that when thou make a long blast, with the ram's horns, and we hear the sound of the trumpet, and all the people shout with a great with a great shout, that the walls of the city, watch the wording, shall fall down, F-L-A-T, flat, is that right? That's right. And the people shall ascend up, every man straight before him. That was the plan. It didn't sound, no military strategist who had been to Air War College could uh, approve of that plan. Number one, he had undisciplined troops. Number two, the plan didn't make sense. But God's ways are not our ways, but as high as the heavens are. In other words, God's mind. You can look at the heavens as being the sky, the stratosphere, or you can go on into stellar space, or you can go in deep space. However high you want to make high, high is high. And God's mind is so high, we can't even measure high. And so he says, now I want you to do it my way. And I'm not asking for your approval. Is that right? right? You know how we are when God says, well, go ahead and do something. But the Lord, you don't know. You know, God is still is in there. Amen? The Lord has already spoken yeah. as the captain. Now, the good thing about military, they give you an order, you don't get to question it. As long as it's a lawful order, you've got to do it. Otherwise, you, you'd be under your uniform code of military justice to fail to obey a lawful order. Is that right? Yeah. I'm telling the truth. Yeah. So the military said, go ahead and do it. Joshua said, yes, sir. Amen. What did we say? I don't know. <laughs> I, it don't sound like it. And then we go call our friend. Do it sound right to you? Huh? And God told you. Huh? Boy, we can really slow up our blessings and during them deny our blessing. Because we got so questioning, questioning.
the question. It don't sound right. Well, God ain't gonna sound right. What is it? God is God. You can't have faith, God. God says, do it my way. And when you do it my way, you'll get my results. All right, so Joshua gets the people together. They do all these great things. And then we get to verse, um, and the city, um, let's get to the verse um, 20. Verse 20 of chapter 6. We're moving our story along. Joshua does the, the behaves as the Lord says. Now, the law also says when you get it there, don't take anything of the accursed thing. All right? And the only one I want you to say is Rahab, who was the harlot, remember? Yes. The harlot who was kind to the spies and didn't give their position away. Everybody in her house, you say. Everybody else, you kill. He said, you hear anybody? He said, Lord, said, listen, don't be sitting up here asking me no question like that. I said, kill him. Amen? So now here's what the Lord said. Verse 20. And so the people, and they went around the city seven days, or six days, on the seventh day they went seven times. And so the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted with a great what? That's worship and praise. They shouted with a great shout. That's worship and praise. And the walls fell down flat so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Now, somebody's going to sit back and say, I know why the walls fell, but uh, it was the decibels of sound that displaced the molecular structure in the walls. And when the sounds got so loud, the walls was unsubstantial, and they crumbled. That's why I did That's what right. That's what right. No! Because it wasn't any of those things you could yeah, explain yeah. by scientific phenomena. It was the presence of God as the host of the armies, of the captain of the host of the armies of the Lord, that went down and took those walls down. Just push them down. Just push them down. Yes, it did. Just shook them down. It was the presence of God. <laughs> when the people shouted, and I don't know what they shouted. The Bible doesn't say they, what they shouted. They just shouted. Amen? If we go to the Spurs game, they have a sign that says, make some noise. And the people shout. They, whatever they say. Don't tell them what they don't know their mama or their mother-in-law. Anything. We don't know what they say. But they make noise. And when they make noise, then that team's supposed to give the team encouragement. God says, make noise, but make the kind of noise I want to hear. So I don't know. They probably said, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's some noise. Amen. Amen. And when they made that noise, God inhabited their praises pushed those walls down flat, and the people of Israel went in and spoiled Jericho. And when the news got to the other kings uh, that were in the confederation of kings that were in the Canaanite promised land, they got scared. They said, how did they cross over? Yet more still, how did they take down those high walls? We are going. That's how you're going to get the story of the Gibbonites in the next chapter who said, we better go and give up. We better figure out a way to scheme and make a league with them because we don't want these people to whoop us. But when God unleashed his power, it was to praying people who had worshipped and praised his name. It wasn't their ability and it wasn't their new uniforms because they didn't have any. It wasn't the catapult. It wasn't the battering ram. It wasn't a big uh, tower that could push up to the wall. All it took was God. That's almost like the David fighting Goliath. David didn't have what? Sword or spear. And he told the Philistine, thou comest to me with sword and with spear. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of God host whose armies you have defied. And he said, I'm going to cut your head off. Is that what he said? And I'm going to feed your carcass to the, to the fowls of the air and, and all the beasts of the field. So jo uh, that was Joshua kind of like David taking on a fortified city with a raggedy, ragtag army that had seen no battle. Can you imagine how secure the generals must have been and Jericho on the walls? They'd been to Air War College. They'd studied the military. They'd had battles, had on all their spaghetti and medals. And, oh, we can do it. We can do it. We can do it. And they see a march the first day around there, a little ragtag army. I used to say looking like the little rascals in Spanky, huh, going around the walls. And they must have let look at those people. They didn't know what to think the first day. They didn't know what to think the second day. The third day, they started getting comfortable. The fourth day, they brought some snacks along with them. Huh? Check them out, huh? They ain't going to do nothing. Huh? Is that what we say? And then they go on the fifth day and the sixth day. And uh-oh, here come the ram's horn. Dun, 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 dun. And here come the seventh day. And they come out marching. And they say, oh, they're going back. It's cool. It's cool. They're going back. And then they fake them out because they kept on marching. Huh? They kept on marching for seven more times around those walls. And then they stopped. And the priests blew the horns, and the people shouted. Now, the discipline.
that was in keeping your mouth shut seven times around. Huh? God says, be still and be quiet and know that I'm God. And on the seventh time, let it out. Amen? That was kind of like a buildup because you wanted to talk after seven times, wouldn't you? Huh? Well, he said, be quiet. And then the Lord blew the horn, has the horns blown. He, they shout, and the walls come falling down flat. And then they go in and take the victory. Now, that's power in worship. Because children, Joshua worshiped God first. He worshiped him by bowing down. He worshiped him by taking off his shoes because the dirt was holy. And he worshiped him by asking the right question. What would you have, not me, but your servant? I'm your servant. See, many times we try to pray and we say, Lord, there's like three ways I heard somebody say we could work. We could work and do our best planning. And then after we do our blessed planning, we can do our best work to make the plan work. And then ask the Lord to bless it. Or we can come up with the best plan and say, Lord, before we work that plan, we ask you to bless what we thought. Or the third way, you can say, Lord, what is your plan? I'm available to do what you want. That's the one that Joshua did. He's decided to give God his availability. And that's all God wants. God already has the plan in eternity. He backs it into time. Backs your blessing into the present tense. All you got to be is available and humble. Do you want some blessing? Tell the Lord you're available. Your servant, speak, Lord, the servant said, thy servant here. And when you do that, you're on your way. If you try to plan it, say, Lord, we've come up, the committee came up with this. Huh? It's all been voted on. And you show me, show it blessing. Now, put your blessing on it. Oh, uh, uh, looking at that, I ain't got nothing to do. I ain't been that. Don't do what you want to do. This go fell from the beginning. But when you take that and throw it away and say, Lord, I'm available to you. My heart, my hands, my ears, you can do what you will. Use me, Lord. Because I'm available. Well, that's my lesson for tonight. I hope you will get your blessing because you would worship and you would praise God and be available and say, Lord, what is your plan? I'm available to. God bless you and may you have a All right. We're going to stand and have our prayer now. Amen. Amen.